channel. Um, for this episode, I want to do a celebrity who I really admire and who I've actually been following since I was a little kid. So, in our fashion segment today, we're going to be talking about none other than Gwen Stefani. so much. She's awesome. She's always fashionable. She's always nice. She's always everything that I thought she always was. A superstar. Sunday when I was home and it was playing on repeat and I was like who 
is this? Who is this? Who is this? And it was upbeat. It was fun. It was cool. It sounded different. Um, it sounded edgy. It sounded um, very raw and in your face. And you couldn't do anything but love it. So I asked her who it was. And it was no doubt. And I started listening to it more. And she, she um, actually, she, she was hoping that my cousin who let her borrow the album wouldn't, wouldn't take it back because it was so funny. But yeah, that's where my affinity for Gwen Stefani started. And I feel like a lot of gay guys have a female role model when they start growing from a young baby gay to an older adult. And that person that influenced them when they were younger, they pulled their strength, they pulled their power, and they kind of just used it as their own. I, for me, she's definitely one of those types of role models for me. Very ballsy, very in your face, very unapologetic, very sweet and savvy and, and knew what she was doing. So that kind of paved the way the rest of my life for my affinity. So that's why I wanted to do her first in the fashion segment. So um, if I remember correctly, she used the bendy um, because her ex-boyfriend, her bandmate, her bassist, if from no doubt, Tony Cannell, his mom wore a traditional bindi inside their culture, and I think he's from India, their, their family's from India, but she loved it so much that she went to, you know, put these bindis on and wore them around all the time, and I remember hearing an interview where she was saying that, um, she used to, you know, find ways to get the bendies and everything. And then one day after it became popular and she became, you know, a superstar, she said that it was so packaged that you could literally go to the mall and they would be selling in little plastics, you know, your little bendy kit. And she thought it was the craziest thing. But yeah, that's how big of an impact these superstars have on culture, pop culture on, you know, the younger demographic. They do something different. They do something fresh. They do something new. They use, you know, maybe influences of tr tradition or the old past, and they put their own spin on it, and that is what makes it work, That makes it, what makes it theirs, that what makes it fresh. So, definitely applaud Gwen Stefani for always staying at the fashion forefront. And when I, even now, when I listen to interviews, on YouTube, when I look up articles, because I follow her, obviously, but there's always a lot of celebrities who do pay homage to Gwen Stefani, and she's not without cause either. She pays, you know, homage to other artists, you know, before her, like Madonna, Lisa, Lisa Cult Jam, um, Prince, a lot of people that influence her. So she she has a lot of influence on on pop culture. Okay. Definitely love that look. So, right after the Tragic Kingdom era, she went on tour, right? So she went on tour for like two and a half years, and it was nothing but touring because it was such a monumental album. It was a behemoth of an album for her to go tour the world. And that's where, you know, a lot of her earlier influence came from, was from, or from that, that era. And she did a remix of a new of a of a of a music video of her old looks fairly recently, I think in the last couple of years. But anyway, the next look I'm gonna be pulling up is a look where she attended the 1998 MTV Music Awards, and MTV was the biggest thing, from what I remember. You turn on the music, and um, excuse me, you turn on the TV. And MTV Music was like the biggest, biggest award show. I kind of want to say it was almost bigger than the Grammys, but that was me from what I remember when I was a kid. And um, it was who's who on MTV, like all the crazy stuff that Gaga does with her red carpet entrance. Yeah, that was the... Oh, yeah, that was the MTV. I'm looking at my computer. Um, but for you guys, it's going to be right here. Um, that was 
was the biggest fashion risque that's where you wanted to let it all hang out you wanted to put it out there on the red carpet and artists definitely did anybody who was anybody wasn't afraid to push that boundary because they know they'd get the press they get the controversy they'd get um splashed all over the the tabloids and everything so that way they can push their 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 um, image even further and it worked it really did work um nowadays it's a little bit harder to do not only because a lot of people are taking more risks but because a lot of people have egos sometimes the way they do things it doesn't have as much cooth as it did back then and it was just a different era in general the context was was completely different from that era to this era but back then you didn't see as many artists doing that type of thing you know the little kim the marilyn manson rose mcgowan um gwen stefani um you had a lot of people really doing these fashion fashion moments that were were pretty big um, so she's got her blue hair going. She's got the the bindies and the um, rhinestones around her eyes. She's got the blue bikini top to match her hair. And from what I remember in one of the interviews I read, she was saying, I think it was the day before or the day of, she didn't know what to do with her hair. She wanted to do, she knew she was wearing the bikini, but she decided that she wanted to wear the same matching hair with it and she was like why not why not let's just do it so she shows up on the red carpet and then when i saw as a little baby gay her her, her walking the red carpet and them showing it on the news i was like blue hair dye is a thing you can dye your hair blue you can really color your hair blue you know what at some point in my life i'm gonna dye my hair blue I love the color. It's pretty. I'm a, I didn't know you could do that, you know, and I didn't really know too much, but <clears throat> I was a younger kid. So now it's like, <clears throat> even looking back at it, I'm like, wow, I really love it. I remember in high school, um, my mom had this, no, no, it wasn't my mom. Yeah, we had this printer and we, um, me and my little brother went online and printed out a ton of photos, like a ton. No, we went to the library, library. We printed out a ton of photos of all the superstars we loved in high school. And let me tell you, there was a lot of Gwen Stefani, uh, photos that I printed off and there were color. And, um, in color, yay. Um, and one of my mom's friends or somebody I don't know who I don't know where I got it from but there was this like really heavy thick plastic and it was in a big giant roll but what you had to do was you would tear the plastic like this and then you would laminate something like a photo and I printed all these huge 8 by 12 photos color photos of all the superstars I liked and Lots and lots and lots of Gwen Stefani. My little uh, brother was a big Christina Aguilera fan, so he, uh, he printed off a lot of Christina Aguilera when the stripped album came out. And I was like, I'm, I'm still Gwen Stefani all the way. There's no, no doubt. Anyway, I went ahead and laminated it all. We like tacked it onto our bedroom uh, walls and we're like, yeah, we're cool. We love this. This is awesome. I didn't know you could do this. And it was just another way of expressing ourselves. <clears throat> that was back when uh, the little pastel blue, pink, purple, um, small little stereo system with the little single CD player would go and you put the CD put in there and you would press play and you would jam out in your room. Yeah, that was that was that era. Anyway. <clears throat> I always love that look. I think she's wearing like a, yeah, I thought so. I, th I thought it was like, like gaucho pants or something, but it's like, um, it's, let me look at it closer. 
it almost looks like a hoop skirt. It kind of is. She's wearing pants with like a little hoop skirt around it. And she looks good and she doesn't give a damn if you think it doesn't look good. Interesting fashion, fashion choice for sure. I know she always did, you know, throughout her rocker era and even now, she always does her um pit flap, you know, the back. She's always got like a flap in the back and then, you know, the little buckles that go around her waist. Um, I don't really know any of the artists who does that or the significance of how she got that inspiration, to be honest, I really don't. I haven't come across anything that she stated, okay, well, this is what I want to do, da 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 And I know, I feel like I know quite a bit, but that's only because I follow her all the time. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> that was awesome. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And then here comes, let me just, um, Steady era. I had to type it in. Okay, so here is the rock steady era of Gwen Stefani. And this was one of the most major influences of my life because I was in high school. So I was I was a little bit more aware of at this point, you know, of what I liked and what I didn't like, what music I liked and what I didn't like, what I thought was happening and what I really didn't care for. You know, that little high school phase where you're in and you're like, I don't care what you like. Don't talk to me about that. I don't care. Nobody likes that artist. But you can listen to my music because I like this music and I'm right and you need to listen to it, right? That was that time, that era for me. I've gotten a little bit better since then. I've, I, um, I, I try and give every artist a chance. Anyway, so the Rocksteady era, this era was freaking phenomenal. And I say that because it's pop and it's rock. It's a certain spin on, um, hold on one second. Okay, guys, sorry, I'm back. I had to lift the laptop higher because the way I was sitting, I was sitting hunched over. So, anyway, uh, back to where we were. So, the Rocksteady era. This is one of the best eras I, I, I love about Gwen Stefani. And because it's purely her. It's purely her. It's the hound's tooth. It's the idea of her putting on the print, the fashion print on her clothes for Rocksteady. Um, the lyrics on her clothes. She puts, you know, the title of the album, excuse me, the title of her album on her rings. Her rings, Rocksteady. She's got the little no doubt, um, belt going on. She's got the little um, nails with the, the little gold rings hooked on them. And she's decked out. She's decked out. She's out there. She's, she's, she's ready to rock. And then, and the songs are like super poppy. And they're not like, they're not like the ska rock like she had with Tragic Kingdom. It's very poppy, very radio friendly. And it's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. It's awesome. It's, it's a, uh, wait a minute. Oh my God, hold on one second. This thing keeps shaking. One, hold on, hold on. Hopefully I don't break it. Okay, move the table away. 
so this is the era where she starts doing collaborations with other artists um, most notably the the Scorpion album from Eve that's when Eve released the Scorpion album and Gwen Stefani was featured on the track and she did um, Let Me Blow Your Mind and the image from that video that always sticks with me when I think of Let Me Blow Your Mind Let Me Blow Your Mind is um, when she's walking into the club with Eve right so she's walking into the club with Eve and there's all these people staring at her and her and Eve have a bikini on Gwen's got the little visor on and she's a little 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 um little jacket on as well and they're all walking in the club they're cute they're they're rocking they know who they are they don't mess with them you know they've got that don't mess with us vibe is what I'm trying to say and it works it works 1000% and it's the coolest song of the year that dropped and it's fresh uh, Eve has a rocker chick she's working with a hot rocker chick so that was that and then um, I would say maybe the year before and maybe 99 Gwen works with Moby to release a song as well and that song is phenomenal it's phenomenal it's phenomenal I think it's on his uh, We Are All Made of Stars album but it's awesome. I still love it to this day. Even the visual cinematography in that music video is incredible. And it's very stripped down, but Glamour Gwen. She's got like the, the white platinum blonde dreadlocks in. She's got the high pencil thin eyebrows with the matte makeup uh, lipstick. She's awesome. Um, so she does the Rocksteady album, she does the collaboration with Eve, and all the songs are very reggae friendly, very reggae toned, um, and she's a boundary pusher, and I'm telling you, like, all the reggae tone now, it's like, she was collaborating back then with it, because a lot of her influences um, were from the ska music, right? So a lot of trombone, trumpets, a lot of that type of music. And so it was just another way for her to influence into the reggaeton scene. And she works with Lady Saw, who's from Jamaica and is a reggae artist, rapper. And so she knows what she's doing. She She's in there. And she's not just doing it because it's a brand or she's not doing it to make it make it something that those roots in the music like those reggae based tone music isn't she's working with them when doing her research and her homework on how to get an album out because she loves it so much which is why I love Gwen and unfortunately some people don't understand that they think that music is one genre they think that they can put you in a box and you're supposed to make music this way your entire life and then that's it that's not how it is that's not how artists minds work they're always the creativity from the universe flows through their bodies they're always putting out stuff they've got to write things down before they lose the sight of it or forget they, they work with the energy of the universe gives them and she's done a lot of influential uh, collaborations with different cultures and that's where people get the controversy from her and be like okay well that's not her that's not you, you i mean nobody can tell you what to do right so just let the artists make the music and let it music speak for itself so that was the hella good that was the uh, the rock track um and then the rock steady song the rock steady song lots of percussion um that album was awesome um and then she does this stint with the pussycat dolls and i'm not talking about like pussycat dolls you know buttons i'm not talking about like them the band i'm not talking about let me i don't remember how the song goes home loosen up my buttons babe not them not them they weren't they weren't out yet they weren't a thing yet they weren't that brand yet there's nothing wrong with that brand i'm just saying she does this stint with the pussycat dolls which is 
is a Carmen Electra owned like all girl review in Los Angeles where they you know perform the burlesque types of shows but um, Gwen does an appearance there with the Busket dolls and you know she's talking to Carmen Electra backstage and this is all on you can probably find it on YouTube but the footage is on her Rocksteady Live DVD and she puts on the makeup and she puts on the outfit and she does her album songs and let me tell you the crowd is loving it and it looks freaking phenomenal it looks cool um and then after the Rocksteady album she goes on sort of a break she goes on a break um she starts you know she's a mom she starts doing her marriage family type of hiatus but of course artists you know they're always thinking it just comes to them they're always want getting the urge to produce something make something create something and so here comes along 2004 and I'm driving on the road to school right so I'm driving on the road to school and I hear a huge like bass playing fast paced track come on but right before that I hear a, a very um recognizable voice I hadn't heard in a while very different style it's a, it's a solo voice, you know, singing a cappella, and then there's a, a piano playing, and then all of a sudden, boom, the bass hits you, and then it's a dance track, it's a dance track, and I'm like, who is this, oh my god, so I turn up the music, and I'm almost, almost to school, right, I'm almost to campus, and I'm like, oh, this sounds like Madonna. For some reason, this sounds like Madonna. She's got the dance thingy going on for sure. It sounds like a club track. It's very, I love it. Oh my God, I didn't know Madonna made music like this. I mean, she makes good music, but this was like hard. This this type of dance, it kicks you in. I don't want to say it, but it kicks you. Anyway, it kicks you. And um, I'm like, wait a second. Wow, that was an incredible track. By the time I park and I'm sitting there trying to process it, and right before I turn off the car, the DJ who played it was like, and that's Gwen Stefani's latest Ella song that just dropped. And I'm like, what? 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 What did he say? I was like, what? That experience was awesome. That was like you know, candy for my ears, like, what was that? And it was the What You Waiting For track. And from then on, I'm like, oh my god, that was the most intense, hard-hitting dance track I've listened to up to that point. And I'm like, okay, I need, I need to, I need to Google the video. I need the album. When does the album come out? What does the music video look like? You know, what, 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 anyway. So, whenever it would play, I would turn up the music. I would tell my friend, stop, quiet, turn on the song, turn on the song, turn on the music, it's on. So that was what you're waiting for. And I'm like, oh my God, she's coming out with a solo album. What? This is crazy. And it's called Love Angel Music Baby. And it's called... myself it's called love angel music baby and the the title you know what you're waiting for is the main single off of it and then comes a rich girl right with eve and i'm like what no way she returns the favor of you know her her success and featuring eve because eve a few years before featured gwen right when gwen was a little bit more on the rock scene only and here she is full pop dance album and it just hits you I'm gonna say it hits you in the nuts so and I'm like what and then the visuals for the rich girl album featuring Eve is nothing short of a masterpiece the pirate outfits the hot couture going on the dancers the moves the reggaeton influence again very 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 Gwen Stefani and then she's got the intricate ornate um a 
Asian type of hairdo with the little, um, I don't know what they're called, little things coming out of her hair. Sorry. Um, but I'm like, what in the world? This is freaking cool. So she does that track. And then Luxurious comes out. And there was another track on there. I haven't Googled these albums in a minute, but what was that other album? Other record? It was the one with Damon Marley. I remember the music video. It's all like uh, on a green screen. But I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. Every second of it. I'm playing it. I buy it. I buy the double limited edition album from, from Target. And that album was like $45, I think, and it came with, and, um, it came with a CD case, like a album case, like a five-disc album case, so it had the album, the CD for Love Angel Music Baby, and then it had a little pull-out and that little sticker, um, Velcro type of strip was on, on the CD case, and you would pull it like that, and then you would open it up, and you would stuff your CD so it would close then add a little maroon ribbon around it where you could like tie it like that it was the coolest product I've ever seen excuse me and then she releases her fashion line um wait, well let me back up she releases a limited edition uh signature purse line with the sport sack and that's when the famous old English against the, you know, with the white letters against the background of black starts. So she d designs these limited edition purses that have, where did my lamb go? And then she's got the guitar string, um, shoulder strap, like the guitar string, so good, yeah, um, guitar, car, guitar shoulder strap, I guess you use it for like when you play the guitar. So she's putting all these little influences and she's paying attention to the details and all those bags sell out right away, you know? So at that point, Allure, L, everyone's doing pieces on Gwen and what she's coming up with. So she starts do, uh, doing a little bit more designing and her clothes are freaking cool as they can be. They're cool. They're rocker influence style. They're all like very edgy. Pretty expensive, but they're cool, and everything starts selling out. All you know, at Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom, they just start selling out. So now, if you could ever find any of those pieces, especially in like new mint condition, that's like that's pretty crazy. So, so she releases her fashion line, and then she goes on the Harajuku Lovers World Tour because she starts pulling the influences from when she came. When she went to Japan and started doing her uh, concerts there, you know. So she started doing uh, Tragic Kingdom. She started touring that album. She did Return of Saturn. I jumped over that album. But she did Return of Saturn and um, Rocksteady. But, and she did Beacon Street. But that was before. And um, the self-titled No Del album. But that was before. So she does all these... Um, tours and when she does them she ends up in Japan she goes to the Harajuku district she sees all the out of this world crazy chic crazy cool crazy um, grunge all these niches and, and types of um, fashion types of couture types of hot couture just blended in the fashion district of Harajuku so she uses that to influence her album her sound, her visuals, and everybody, you know, loves it. So, she, she goes in the Harajuku Lovers Tour, and she she does a huge tour. She um, wraps it up, and then I'm thinking that's it. I'm thinking she's not going to do any more uh, pop music as far as, like, solo music. I'm hoping, I'm hoping she would. I'm, like, crossing my fingers, my eyes, my toes, my whatever I can cross. And then she announces a couple years later a new album a new 
solo album called The Sweet Escape. And then Akon is featured on that track. And I'm like, oh my god, and it's lovey, feely, butterfly feeling all over again. And it just, it, it goes on. But um, her fashion has always remained pinnacle. Her fashion has always remained pinnacle. Even like nowadays when she's hanging out with Blake on the on their ranch in Oklahoma or going to the grocery store and she's getting a photo snapped of her putting her kids in the car. It's like she's always wearing something cool, something fresh, something fashionable. She's always got a really, really great pair of shades to go with it. She's always looking glamorous and it's like how does somebody look that good 24-7? It's, it's awesome. She's got a lot of discipline for sure, especially with her body. Um, and that's all I want to say about that piece because we're not doing controversy or body imaging or any of that stuff right now. We're talking fashion. So fashion-wise, she's pinnacle. But that's all I wanted to talk about right now. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'm going to put this guy back in and do my best not to scratch it because I love, love, love this gift. It's freaking phenomenal.